I believe we are all created for greatness. Not mediocrity. That we are to live our lives accordingly. Striving to be agents of change as we attempt to leave this world a better place than we found it. Ladies and gents, welcome to Best in Business with Manny Lopez, where passion becomes success. I'm your host, Mr. Too Blessed to be Stressed, broadcasting live on Radio Latino Inc. As best in business. Thanks for tuning in. We are live from the Equitable Building in Los Angeles. We have an amazing show for you guys today. Thanks for tuning in. If you're tuning in on RadioLatinoInc.com, we are live in about 40 plus different countries right now. If you're tuning in on Facebook, find us at, what is it? Manny Lopez 888. You can also find us at Radio Latino Inc. on our Facebook. And we are live right now. We have we have Alex Rodriguez inside the studio right now. Say hello, Alex. What's up, everybody? All right, so we've got a really awesome show. We have five guests that we're going to be highlighting today. We've got Paul Getter, who is the actual social media manager for Ty Lopez. We've got Alex Rodriguez. You're going to learn his story very shortly. Uh, amazing success story. You just you're, you're going to hear it. So. Uh, we've also got an amazing lineup of more people on. Sophie Felix will be coming in the studio. You're going to hear her story as well. We've got Greg Reed, which uh, if you don't know who this guy is, Google him. Uh, it's amazing what you're going to find out. And then also we've got Rob Frazier, a former Marine who has paid off over $100,000 in debt in just nine months. We're going to share a story and how he did that. So first and foremost, I've got Alex in the studio, so let's talk about Alex. Let's find out his story. Welcome to the show, man. Thank you so much for having me, man. Oh, definitely, definitely. So I want to know, well, first, so let's actually check out his bio. He sent me an, an awesome bio about what he does. Uh, he goes by Alex the Speaker, so if you're going to find him on social media, Alex the Speaker like everywhere, all right? He's a 23-year-old TEDx speaker, influencer, and CEO from South Florida, called by a deeper purpose to help shift minds of millennials and young entrepreneurs to embrace their deeper calling in life. Alex dropped out of college when he was 20 to pursue a career in speaking and build his own company at 22 based around social media. Since the start of his speaking career, he has now reached over 100 million viewers of his brand, Alex the Speaker. He continues to grow and find inspiration from his mentors such as Sean Stevenson, Barbara Glanz, and Tony Robbins. Man. That is an amazing accomplishment, list of accomplishments by the age of 23. That is amazing stuff. You're already a TEDx speaker. You own your own business. You're making a ton of money in what you're doing based on what I've seen and in, uh, in, in the stuff that you've shared. Man, you, I need to know how you did it. So first and foremost, you say you grew up in Florida, right? Yeah, I, I was born in Tampa. And then when I was six, I moved to Sarasota, Florida. Sarasota, okay. Yeah. And it's... And, what a beautiful place to come from, man. Yeah. I loved it so much. Awesome. I don't know if you guys can see this, but I am sweating like crazy right now. It is hot. Uh, it is hot. So I'm going to take off my jacket here. Uh, we are going to get a little bit more comfortable. And once I cool down, we'll, uh, we'll get this jacket back on. So tell me, Alex, growing up, what was it like? Growing up was, um, was amazing because I had a father, right, that was just, he was just in his up-and-coming years, right? Like it was yeah. this golden years, man. He was killing it in real estate. And like I said, I was talking to you before, uh, he started with nothing, you know, Cuban family, came to America, mother making 70 cents an hour. He was very humbled by that. Mm -hmm. And he grew a lot in the spiritual sense and in just being so connected to, to understanding what it actually takes and the value of money. Yeah. Um, he built up this, this tycoon, right? So growing up with a father that had nothing, right? And knew the drive and the hunger that it took to actually make something like a multi-million dollar business was amazing because he also taught me the value of money. He never gave me really anything like that. He gave me all the support in the world and he loved me unconditionally. And the thing is that taught me more than ever being just put into this lifestyle that he was creating for himself, right? Nice. And then having a mother that was just so beyond uh, supportive is, is, is awesome. And I can go into that in, in a second, like I was talking to you before. It's like with um, my father's story and my mother's story, but basically the combination of two, just having a mother that was, she's very spiritual. She believes in God and she always brought me down to earth no matter 
what I did, right, whether it was working and being mentored by Sean Stevenson and hearing back from Tony Robbins or all these different people. As a speaker, she's like, that's great, but remember why you're doing it. Remember the impact you're trying to create. And I'm so thankful for her for doing that. Um, being in Florida as well, especially in Sarasota, it's a very affluent town. So I was always connected in meeting all these people, right? Whether they're politicians, millionaires, billionaires, right? Yeah. So I knew what it looked like. I felt it, you know, dro- you know, flew on, on, on jets and traveled the world and whatnot. But everywhere I went, my father told me every single time, he goes, listen, this is what it takes to do this. This is what you need to do this. He never just gave me things so you know what sense, i mean your he, father he was always your taught mentor, right no my most important mentor okay. yeah and he he's the most humble person i've probably ever met in my life and um definitely one of the, the one that challenges me the most yeah. that's that's the thing because he he knew it he knew it from the start he's like listen what makes a person right is the hunger so creating that with his within his son i think was like his biggest goal and I think at 19 years old, you know, growing up, I dropped out of college was just me tuning into more of what I felt like I was truly called to do, which was my mother on the yeah. spiritual side. She's like, always follow what your heart, you know, is, is guiding you towards because this is your one life. You have to, you know, capitalize on this, make it what it is, empower people, impact people, create as much change as you can. Definitely. So um, the combination of those two, the entrepreneur and the, the beautiful mother, man, she that's what that's what got me to the state of wanting to empower so many people, right? And then I was just blessed to be able to do it, you know. And uh, so you had known here you had dropped out of college at twenty. What yeah. made you drop out? Well, <laughs> it's crazy because some people look at me and they they wonder why. Because I was in the number two art school, I think, number one or number two, uh-huh. Ringling College of Art and Design, right? And I was basically going for. Um, business yeah it was advertising right and i went for photo and film the first two years Mm -hmm. or the first year and then the second year i went to the business and advertising and i just didn't feel fulfilled i was sitting in the classroom all these people were talking about how they're in debt i met this guy what really pushed me over the edge was after feeling as if it wasn't really getting anywhere with what i wanted to do Mm -hmm. right and kind of just creating for more businesses but not for something i want to build my own um it kind of became this thing where I went to Subway one day just to go and grab like a, what is this, five inch, five dollar sub or six inch, five dollar sub. And this guy was $250,000 in debt wow. and he was working at Subway. And I'm like, wow. and he goes to my school and I was like, um, all right, and I'm out, right? Because I didn't see a reason why I had to go in debt. I didn't see a reason why anyone has to go in debt for general education. I think what's important is you get around mentors and I started from that point on spending like $1,000, $1,500, whatever it was for an event, right? Mm-hmm. To meet all these people. And I just connected with like-minded people. Yeah. That's what I think college is missing is that these, unless you're a doctor or a lawyer, I get that. But like as an entrepreneur, if you want to build something, if you want to create something for yourself and kind of go on your own journey like that, just connect with people within your realm. And if yeah. you don't know your realm, get around people that are at least in the same mindset as you and you'll find your way and that's exactly what happened to me wow. so I, I just found that as being more financially um, smart you yeah. know putting a thousand dollars in instead of going a hundred grand in debt because I have no debt right now and it's it's yeah it's a blessing for that so look at that concept guys he's got no debt he dropped out of school he saw the problem in this education system is they're teaching us to become employees instead of employers. No. We're not getting that ability to see how to govern, how to run a business, how to file taxes, how to literally run our life, right? We're taught how to follow directions, how to memorize things, how to sit down, shut up and behave, right? That's the concept of school. Um, so and a, a great quote that, that Albert Einstein once said is don't let schooling get in the way of your education. 100%. And, and I think it's it's so true because we look at the examples over and over and over again. Seriously, unless you are in the field where you have to have a degree to get in that field, then why are you in that? I mean, I, I literally, I was uh, so funny because I met a guy who's an entrepreneur and he's going to school to get a master's degree in business. A master's degree in business, why? Name one person that is influential who's successful that's toting it because he had a master's degree in business well it's not going to get you really any farther than myself i mean myself i have 
uh, I had because I, it's expired already when I hit 30. But when I uh, was in high school, I did very well one year just to prove a point. And I got all these good stuff. I got like student of the month. I got, you know, a scholarship to go to any college I want to go to. And I literally have not stepped one foot in a classroom unless I'm speaking on stage. Mm -hmm. So in that sense, I've been able to create my success without a college degree. He's been able to do that himself as well. Let's talk a little bit about how you took from 20, you mm -hmm. left college, you started your company by 22. What happened in those two years? I was broke. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be totally straight up, I don't beat around the bush with a lot of this stuff. It's like, you know, so I dropped out of college and um, father looked at me and he realized, he goes, you know what, this, I get it, right? Because he did the same thing, yeah. got his associates and started his thing. But my mother freaked out. Oh my Lord, you want to talk oh, about like, yeah. No, but the thing is she didn't get it until, you know, I started up on Vine, right? Mm -hmm. Vine was my launching platform for speaking. So from 20 years old, right? Or it was a little bit before that, I was like 19 turning 20. So um, three, four years ago, guys? Yeah, around that time. What happened was basically, um, I found myself getting into this platform. My first video went viral within 24 hours. I think it was wow. like 20,000 views or something like that, right? Which at that time, and you got people now, you know, 50 million views, but that was big yeah. for 24 hours. And I thought my phone got hacked. I was like, there's no way that this <laughs> happened, right? I'm looking at what it was like the video it was about? crazy. I think it was like believing in yourself. Some Just a quick motivation. When I look back, six second motivational message, it was real cheesy. But the thing is, it was short enough to interest with people and deep enough to connect, which is why it grew. And on that platform, I, I think it was like 120 or 150,000 people that, that I had in my following and then Vine died. So I went to Snapchat and Instagram and Twitter and you know, all, just all these different platforms. And I started reaching more and more people and I think it's like 150 million view viewers now or something like that, right? But it grows all the time because I recently just had a video that went, went viral and that was about, you know, truly actually getting in tune with yourself, the self-awareness aspect, right? Many people inspire me to talk about this, but for me in my life, I've spent a lot of time trying to get to know me apart from just what I need to do in order to be able to make money and all this. Like I thought it was more important just to understand why I'm even here, who I am as a person. And um, that had like 2.7 million views, 100,000 shares. And I was like, I had no idea that video went viral. No idea. <laughs> and my friend was like, this is your face, right? And I'm like, yeah. And he goes, well, check out the video. And that's how I got, that's how I knew about it. But like, so every single day it's growing. But the important thing is that I'm just using social media to be able to create a positive impact because I know it's easier than ever now just to be able to inspire people and wake them up. Like I want to wake souls up to truly what they are because yeah. people can get dogged, you know, dogged down by all of this idea of what life should be and business should be. It's like, first it's yourself, you know, it's, you have to, you have to know you if you want to be successful in anything that you do. Yeah. And, and I was told that by everyone. I found that out for myself and really, um, everything kind of grew from that point on, but from 20 to 22, man, yeah, I was broke. I had no idea, uh, how I was going to make it. You know, I just knew that I, I, I didn't want to settle for a job. I knew that my life amounted to something greater than that. It was for a greater purpose. Right. So, and I believe everyone has that as well. No matter what anyone thinks, some people say that some people are, are only at this level, but that's because of the mindset. They don't know better. If you teach them better, they'll understand. So during that time, I, I just kind of, I was reading a lot of books, got a lot, you know, a mentors, went to a lot of events, but mainly I spent a lot of time with myself, right? And understanding, okay, what is it and why is it that you want to be able to, you know, speak, right? Because Vine was something, Vine is not the reason I dropped out of college, but Vine definitely was the thing that made me aware that people wanted to hear more of what, you know, was being said. Yeah. So then I just started getting around speakers and these speakers introduced me to larger events and um, it kind of all just compounded as momentum. And then the business uh, blew up because social media, I, I reached so many people on there and I knew a lot of the tactics and, and strategies and whatnot. So that when Ty Lopez actually created his social media agency, I was like, all right, this is interesting. What is it, like a thousand dollar investment or something like that, right? And I was like, all right, cool, let's give it a shot. And it actually taught a lot, yeah. you know? And I was actually very, surprised by that you know i think he's a very credible guy but like i was surprised by how how much it actually taught for someone that's new right perfect but for me i already had a lot of that so i i was thinking about it before it actually happened but then it just happened mm -hmm. you know he put this thing out and i was like wow synchronicity and that's how a lot of stuff in my life 
has been for the past three years, and which is why I know for anyone that's watching, when you feel like things are flowing, that's when you know you're on the right path. Doesn't matter if you're making a lot of money, doesn't matter if you're, you know, what's going on in your life, but if you feel like you're on the right path and you are flowing in this momentum that's gaining you more happiness and joy in what you do, yeah. you're on the right path because that's what human beings should be doing. You know what I mean? You shouldn't be sacrificing your happiness for, for growth of any kind, you know? Exactly. Your, your happiness is definitely first. But so then the, the company came about and, you know, real estate uh, agents, real estate just in general, politicians, people like that, all types of big brands and big businesses started reaching out to because when it came down to it, I'm not, I'm not going to walk into a room the way that I'm getting clients and all that, right? Yeah is by saying, well, hey, you know, I'm, I'm this guy and I do this and this and that. It's like, no, listen, I'm, I'm a 23-year-old guy. I know what I can bring to the table. And it's the authenticity, right? And you build relationships with people, right? Like how me and you are talking right now. That's how I talk to these people. It's just, we're here, you know? Serve, yeah. And we just, and I just want to serve. That's all it comes down to. When you come from a serving mindset, people appreciate it because they can feel your sense of authenticity. My biggest quote is, lead with authenticity because it's all about impact. Yeah. And if more people understood the genuine aspect of selling, which is not selling, it's just serving, yeah. <laughs> right? You would do 10x the amount of growth in your business you just by That's being a good human a, being. A really good point, that 10x. There's one thing I wanted to cover today. Um, definitely some great insights. So if you guys are listening to this right now, and you are getting some insight, some good knowledge. I want to see some hearts. I want to see some thumbs up there um, because I definitely know you guys are learning some good stuff right now. So let me see those in there. But I want to share with you a concept that I just learned recently. Um, not necessarily learned, but really just saw how simple it was to explain. And it was a video by uh, Steve Harvey that shared how to take a $10 idea and become a millionaire. Like. Most people think that you need to have a million dollar idea to become a millionaire. That's just not true, right? Here's, this, here's the concept how he explained it. Take a $10 idea. Let's say you're a consultant. Let's, oh, I mean, obviously not $10. You don't do $10 consulting. Um, <laughs> but let's say it could be as simple as cutting grass. It could, it's something that you get paid $10 for, okay? You take that $10. Now, you reach 10 people with that. How many does that give you? That gives you 100 right? $10, 10 people, $100, okay? So you take that $100 that you've made. You take that effort that it took you to make that $100. You do that 10 more times, okay? 10 more times. Now you have 1000 right? Now you've made $1,000 with your $10 idea. Whatever that concept was, that process, that action that you took to make that $1,000, well now do that 10 more times, now you've got a $10,000 revenue. Do that on a monthly basis. You're making over $100,000 a year. So whatever effort it took you to get that $10,000, you've got to be able to do that in one month. Okay? You can do that, that kind of effort in one month. That's an easy type of concept. You take that, you get $10,000, right? Now you've made $10,000. You do that on a monthly basis. you made over $100,000 for the year. Now this is where it comes where you have to start the duplication method. Once you've made 100,000 a year, now it's time to hire. You cannot go much farther on your own. Maybe you can make a couple of 100,000 a year, maybe even a half a million a year by yourself. But now you've got to bring in a team. You got to be able to duplicate yourself, duplicate the efforts that you are creating out there to be able to reach more people. So you take that $100,000 a year and you times that by 10. You get 10 duplicated duplicatable methods and my friends you have just made a million dollars it's a simple math guys <laughs> simple math i always try to break it down to simple numbers for people because that's what they really have to understand everything is a numbers game if you want to have your message of value first you have to find your target market you got to find out who you're mm -hmm. trying to speak to because your message your copy the way you brand yourself the colors you use will all be determined by who the market is you're trying to tap into right so your business you're in social media marketing that's probably your main income right yeah okay so who would be your target market with that that in real estate uh, target market with the agency is is mainly brands just because I'm a I'm a brand myself so yeah. I know most about that right mm -hmm. businesses as well but Mainly brands. Yeah. 
Hearts, hearts, hearts. <laughs> They're but, coming um, in like crazy. This is awesome. Yeah. So, so ask for them. They come. Mainly, <laughs> mainly brands, though. Brands. So, so also other income speakers. Level for these brands. Hmm? What kind of income level for these brands? Oh, man. We had, we had someone. Um, I don't know. I, I, I'm not going to say them because I can't. But it's like they spent like $1.5 million a month, right? $1.5 million a month. Made $1.8 million back. So, like. Hey, that's a good 300,000, <laughs> you know, it's like 300 K yeah. a month. I'll take that. Yeah. So, <laughs> but that's, that's off of like, so that's selling programs. That's, you know, Facebook ads, Google ads, anything like that. Okay, it's like, so where do you find those guys? Because think about, it, I mean, every business would love to have contacts where they're spending over a million dollars a month in marketing and you're the marketing expert guy that could help them. So where do you find guys like that? I, th I think, like I said, I, it's just by building connections, right? I've never done one Facebook ad, one, nothing, right? Wow. Although I do them. For other people, I don't yeah. do them for myself. Yeah. Because the thing is, everyone's on Facebook saying they're an expert, saying they're this, saying they're that, right? I can point a couple and people out. that is something that I just think is being so overplayed. Like, there's so much of it. Yeah. So if someone sees you out well, it's there... it's Ty's fault. He's over there on every <laughs> video, on every social media channel talking about, go get my social media marketing program. <laughs> We're closing it out this week, guys. You're not going to get a chance. And then next week, we brought it back. No, but I mean, but Ty, Ty, <laughs> it's so true, isn't it? Yeah. Ty, Ty took, but you expect that from him. You know, like yeah. you, you know that, and he does really, really well with it. But there's so many other people that just don't have the brand, which is why they, it, it's not as sustainable. I don't yeah. think, although it can do really well. I know friends of mine making thirty thousand dollars a month doing that. They're twenty four, so it works. But for me, I want to do something different, which is yeah. a little bit more old school. Which is just, first off, I started knocking on doors, which for some people they'd be like, "Wow, that's a waste of time," but not really. Because when you look at right someone, doors. yeah, if you look at someone in it's the like eyes, right? Yeah. <laughs> you look at somebody <laughs> in the eyes and you realize that this person is an actual person. You treat them like that. It's a serving mindset and you could show them the value in person. Yeah. These people stick with you, not just for six months, right? But we're talking like five years, 10 years. Yeah. So a referral based business is what I started. Oh. So when I got my like first two or three, right? I just, I, I was doing everything I could for them. Right, I don't even care if they were paying me a thousand dollars a month or even, I don't know, ten thousand dollars, whatever it is. Right, build the social proof. Yeah, and I just did everything in my power to be able to serve them the best that I could. Right, and I knew that if I did that, that it's just human beings. They want to be able to give. If yeah. you give, they give. Right. So true. So I just gave everything that I could because I genuinely wanted to, and then I just got the referrals from that, and it just built and built and built. So I think that. Um, that's a tactic I think a lot of people use, but not enough. This know? is literally like my game plan when working with influencers. If I want to connect with somebody like a Les Brown, uh, a Sharon mm. Lecter, a Kevin Harrington, um, you know, a Grant Cardone, a Ty Lopez, how do you get their time? Right? These guys are super busy. Mm -hmm. These guys are running multiple companies. They have multiple brands themselves. How are you getting yourself in front of their brand? How do you get their time to say, hey, you're valuable. I want to work with you. Mm -hmm. So here's what I do. And you probably do the same thing. It's all focused on serving first. You find a way to bring value to their brand that you can say, let me show you what I can do. I have the skill set. All you have to do is give me a chance and don't focus on the money. Like for mm -hmm. me, it's all, I literally wouldn't even send an invoice to an influencer unless they had gotten some results and they said, Hey, how much, you know, or something like that. Mm -hmm. I'd rather just say, let's work a way where I can serve you and you can serve me because plus, trust me, if I charge Ty Lopez 10 grand, 20 grand, 50 grand for an app, it wouldn't make sense. I'd rather, I'd rather serve and have him just put me out to his network. That would make me 10 times more. And people don't get that concept is collaborating with influencers. Yeah. And a big concept that my mentor told me when, when we were, I mean, this is before I even started my first company back in 2007, um, yeah, 10 years ago. He told me, capture the, capture the leaders, capture the market. 100%. That's, that's the biggest thing. I, so Tony Robbins, Sean Stevenson, all these people, right? First off, that was crazy hearing back from Tony Robbins. But um, the way that I got there, right, was because you just gave value. Yeah. These guys don't need to hear your speech on like how great you are and like yeah. what you can do and how much money. They don't care. What they want to know is like, okay, first off, they don't want to be bothered 
because they have so much going on. Yeah. So just add the value and don't do it in a way where it's where it's like it's requiring time from them. You just do what you do and you do it well and then you bring it to them and then that's that. Yeah. You know, and 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 that's all it is because and show up. You have to show up. You got to do it in person. Very, yeah. Like, I've never closed an influencer without meeting them. I'd had to invest in program that they were at, invest in an event that, I mean, for Les Brown, I paid $7,500 to go to an event. Show interest. Show interest. And deeper. check that out. That night I met him, I was hanging out in his hotel room and a couple hours later. Yeah. Come on. I mean, that's, that's a power behind that face-to-face -face connection when you show that you can invest in them mm -hmm. and be there for them. That's, I think, definitely a big power there. That, no, that's a huge thing. So it's 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 definitely just understanding that the person comes first. That's it. Because yeah. it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if it's if it's Tony Tony Robbins is a person, right? First, he's an incredible, incredible, incredible speaker, author, all of that, right? Yeah. But when you see him as a person first, I mean, that's what he said in the message. He goes, he goes, man, I appreciate the fact that you are so open to just seeing me for me right yeah. people at any success level love that right they don't want you to you know freak out everyone does that if you want to stand out be someone that just adds value understands the worth and they will understand yours awesome. right just show up in a big way though yeah you know but don't try to sell yourself just be you exactly i, I think this is like I, it sounds so simple and i think a lot of the people that are tuning in are like yeah you know i get that but a lot of people get that but they don't do it because yeah. when it comes down to it it's like this overthinking aspect is like but if i if i don't show them this or if i don't do that m maybe maybe well they won't really understand what i can bring to the table you know exactly. it's now just, another let, let's switch a topic a little yeah, bit yeah yeah I want to know what you think your purpose is. Now you're telling me a story about a lady um, <laughs> yeah. a long time ago. So tell, tell me how that, and I think that kind of ties in a little bit of what your purpose is, what you're sharing before. So um, I'm, a, I'm a firm believer that everyone has a purpose before they're born, right? And the reason why I think that is because I was told a story from a, a lady that I, I love very dearly, right? And she told me basically, it was in Greece many years ago. It was like 20, 30 years ago or something like that. And it was just her and a group of friends driving up in a white car up this mountain, right, on Mother Mary's birthday, right? And there's a chapel in, in a bar or something like that. It's just a scene up there on the, top of the, on the top of the mountain. And they go to the bar, they have some drinks, they hang out, do their thing. And then only the driver and her go back to the chapel, right? Mm -hmm. And I found this interesting as the story goes on that these two people, you know, but basically they all get in the car they're driving down the hill and the car stalls and there's no railings on this on this mountain and they fly off this mountain okay driver jumps out before the car goes over but this lady is in that car with like four other people and the metal is crushing glass is crushing it's just nuts and i i believe in god firmly right um i believe we're all called by something greater but hashtag real man love jesus Yes. Anyway, shout out to that. But like, um, so bottom of the hill, car crashes, it's over. Everyone died. But the thing is, within that moment of the car crashing down that hill, this lady was screaming at the top of her lungs, just yelling, asking, praying, right? Do not let me die here. Let me have a baby boy. Let me have a baby boy. I need to live, right? I know there's something more, right? Let me have a baby boy over and over again. Car gets to the bottom. And everyone is dead, been in probably the worst way you could think of. But she walks out of there, right? Crawls out of there because the car is so smushed uh, with barely any scratches and just some bruises. Wow. And I don't know what the chances really are of that, but I believe that God spared this woman and this woman is my mother, right? And only a few years later, I was born, and which is why I feel that I was basically born to serve because that was not supposed to happen you know and that's why I feel so compelled to be able to share with other people th uh, that purpose is is given before life is because millions of people had to be born and live and do their thing in order for you to be here you know what I mean it's like yeah. cycle of life had to happen so many times in order for you to exist and that's why that's why I just I'm so passionate about what I do and I would be willing to do it for free because I understand that my life is is here to be able to just empower people to understand more of that truth. Wow. Yeah. That that is an amazing story. Just just think of 
how, what I mean, what he was explaining about how there's so many cycles to life just for you to exist. And it, it, like Gary Vaynerchuk says, you're like one of a seven trillion to one chance that you exist, that you are here today. And most people are wasting it. They're throwing it away, living somebody else's dream, doing something they don't love, going home to a home they, they're not happy. Yep. Uh, some of them are just going home alone and they just don't understand the purpose of life. You have real purpose. You have something you, that you can do that can bring happiness to the world, that can bring you happiness. Now, I want to keep you on for a couple more segments if that's cool with you. I'm, I'm um, cool with it. We've got to take a quick break here. So we're going to do a quick commercial break. We'll be back in just a couple minutes. And we're going to be talking about our other four amazing guests that we have highlighted. We're just getting started. This is Best in Business, Manny Lopez, Mr. Too Blessed to Be Stressed. We'll be right back on Radio Latino. Live Mondays, 10 to 12 Pacific Time. It's Best in Business with Manny Lopez, where passion becomes success. 